Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Apple, Spotify, or Google, please leave a five-star rating. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which makes crypto investing easy. Uphold is a great platform that I've been using for years. They're one of my go-to exchanges for liquidity, and they have some great promotions they're running now. For example, you can buy, sell, trade Bitcoin for free. They have 0% commission on staking. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. All right, my friends, the amicus briefs are coming in hot and heavy on Gary Gensler and the SEC. I'm sure their lawyers' heads are spinning right now because not only are amicus briefs coming in from the Ripple lawsuit, but they're coming in now on behalf of the Grayscale lawsuit. As you all know, the uh, SEC has denied Grayscale's Bitcoin spot ETF and Grayscale has filed a lawsuit against them. Well, we have the Chamber of Digital Commerce filing an amicus brief, and today we had Coinbase also file an amicus brief. So we're just seeing a lot of briefs coming in, and the SEC, like I said, their heads must be spinning right now. And let me give the details around the Chamber of Digital Commerce, uh, their respective brief. The SEC continues to unjustifiably block spot Bitcoin ETFs from coming to market. Today, we filed an amicus brief with a coalition of blockchain advocacy organizations in the case of Grayscale versus SEC to advocate for greater choice and protections for our industry. At issue is the Grayscale spot Bitcoin ETF application, which SEC has denied. The brief asserts that it should be listed because Grayscale has satisfied every regulatory requirement for listing on a national securities exchange. The denial of Grayscale's ETF application is another example of the SEC picking winners and losers and operating outside of its mandate as a disclosure regulator. Absolutely. So even folks on the Bitcoin side, the Ethereum side are recognizing Gary Genser, and I, man, we've talked about it on this podcast forever, right? He is trying to roadblock crypto. He's trying to stop all of it. He's not trying to kill it. Don't get me wrong there. He's trying to slow it down. Why? As I've said many times, my theory is to slow it down for the incumbents to take a position, for BlackRock to take a position, for BNY Mellon, because those traditional financial giants are getting disrupted. The crypto startups, you and I as retail front random for the first time in history. And they don't like that. And that's why they're now taking positions. So Gary's not going to approve a, bot, a, a Bitcoin spot ETF until BNY Mellon takes a position, until BlackRock takes a position and NASDAQ and so forth. Now, I'm not mad at those companies. They're just doing their thing, right? But clearly, the regulator who is supposed to be protecting investors should not be doing that. But unfortunately, in the game of politics and campaign donations, some of these folks are bought, and Gary is a Goldman Sachs guy. So that is what's taking place here, and I'm glad the pressure is mounting. It's building, and you all may recall uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce also filed an amicus brief on, on behalf of Ripple. So Coinbase also filed their amicus brief. So the industry is piling on on the SEC here, guys, and I'm sure we're going to see more amicus briefs for more members of the crypto industry. And what I'm actually waiting for uh, is that more applicants of the Bitcoin spot ETF that have been denied should be filing lawsuits. And I'm hoping they're not chicken. And they, they follow Grayscale's lead here and they start putting the pressure because if you have a lot of different companies, especially like the big names, like your Van Eck and so forth, if they can do it, uh, it will put a lot of pressure on the SEC and, and they don't want that PR nightmare, right? So, uh, some of the biggest names. And if you all re recall, uh, I had interviewed former SEC official Joseph Grunfest seven months ago, and he served as SEC commissioner under Ronald Reagan. And he said, these applicants, all of them can sue the SEC over denial because there's no reason for them to deny it. And uh, But we know what the reason is, right? We know what the unspoken reason is. And uh uh, Gary's stopping Bitcoin spot ETFs. He's trying to go after Ethereum now. He's We know he's they filed a lawsuit against Ripple over XRP. And this is why we need Ripple to win this lawsuit, not just because of XRP and all that, but we need Ripple to win for to set the precedence 
for the rest of the market so the rest of the market can fight back because Gary's going to go down the list. He's going to go to Algorand, Cardano, Solana, you name it. He's going to go down the list. And um, we're, I'm really, really happy to see a lot of the folks in the industry and these advocacy groups and even companies like Coinbase piling on here, like get your act together, SEC, right? And the other side of the news here with Gary is that the reports that have been coming out that people are not happy with what he's doing with all the PR stunts with Kim Kardashian and all the nonsense, uh, these people who work at the SEC are seeing the bullshit that we are seeing, right? And they're leaving. So uh, Fox Business reported that the SEC is seeing its highest attrition rate in 10 years. Here's a quote. Most concerning is the attrition rate in senior officer and attorney positions, about 20.8% and 8.4% for the fiscal year of 2022, respectfully. So people are not happy. There's also reports uh, from Fox Business that uh, staffers are being overworked. They see uh, Gary trying to take uh, a lot of credit for things and uh, he's just has an agenda and he's trying to get the treasury job. And even Charles Gasparino of uh, Fox confirmed that. He said the inspector general's report on Gary Genser's tenure at the SEC confirms the reporting we've done at Fox Business that uncovered significant turnover in the senior ranks of the commission story developing. So not uh, Gary is trying to do his own thing, his agenda. And uh, it's not until the Republicans win the midterms that they're going to be able to keep him in check. Because as you've seen in my interview with Congressman Tom Emmer, he said, we don't have the gavel. We don't have the gavel in our hands to keep Genser and other regulators in check. But he said a new day is coming. And uh, you know we'll see what happens with the midterms. But uh, Gary's going to have a target on his back. So uh, you just see a lot of nonsense happening on multiple fronts here with Gary Genser and the SEC. Now, some big news from Fidelity Digital Assets. So today they sent out an email to customers announcing that Ethereum will be available for purchase this month. So they these companies continue to expand and they, they highlighted here that the Ethereum merge has completed um, and many investors are looking at Ethereum through a new lens and yada, yada. And it looks like... Um, as of October 28th, 2022, investors will be able to buy, sell, and transfer Ether. So I was, as I've always said, it starts with Bitcoin, it'll go to Ethereum, and then they'll open it up to other cryptocurrencies. Now, of course, a big part of that hurdle and opening it up to other cryptocurrencies is the SEC, right? I'm sure they would love to list everything, but uh, Gary Genser is a clown and uh, we're stuck in this... Uh, holding pattern because we don't know what he's going to do next. So uh, it's just a matter of time. And this is why we need to get him out of office. Call your regular, your, your, excuse me, call your representatives, make content, tweet. Our voices are being heard because of social media. We can tweet at congressmen and congresswomen. So uh, use that to your advantage, guys. Now, we recently talked about the MasterCard news of them launching a platform to help uh, banks to be able to uh, offer crypto to their clients. And Michael Maybach, who's the CEO of MasterCard, he tweeted out, excuse me, not tweeted out. He shared on LinkedIn some great thoughts on the metaverse as well as the new crypto product, as I mentioned. He said that today, the metaverse is still being developed, but its challenges and social impacts are already being considered today. Take hybrid work in the metaverse. There's potential for more collaboration and presence in a virtual office. But it's not so simple. Companies will need to evaluate consumer privacy and surveillance concerns. If and when it gains popular popularity, we'll need to ensure the hardware is accessible to all. Our teams will be researching the metaverse. Our primary focus is on solving real problems for people for this and all new technologies. So great thoughts here. You know, we're very early, guys, and definitely early for the metaverse. I don't think the world is ready yet. Maybe gamers are more ready for it, right? But the metaverse is going to be a real thing, guys, for entertainment, for work, for experiences. It's coming. And while you as a person may say, oh, I don't really care for that, you know, but guess what? The next generation will. 
Uh, I, I think we've seen it historically, right? They're growing up in a digital world on the internet and the metaverse is just going to be another aspect to that. And um, guess what? The metaverse is going to be powered by the blockchain, have NFTs and crypto in it. It's it's essentially like a gaming uh, environment, right? Uh, but not necessarily that you, you, you're trying to win something or do something, but just experiences, concerts and working and all that. That's what's coming. It may not happen tomorrow, next year. It may be 15 years away, but that's what's coming, my friends. Um, he also shared a couple of days ago his thoughts on that crypto technology working with Paxos. And I want to share it with you guys because, I mean, it's the CEO of MasterCard. He said, people want to invest in crypto. We're helping them to do what uh, to do that with companies they trust. Today, we announced a new service called Crypto Source that allows financial institutions to offer cryptocurrency trading to their customers or for their customers. And last week, we announced a new crypto fraud prevention tool for banks called Crypto Secure. This work to bring the best of banking and crypto together can give customers more choices and peace of mind. It bolsters the crypto ecosystem. It brings new innovations into financial services. Guys, this is a CEO of one of the major credit card companies, right? Uh, amazing what's happening. Crypto is here to stay. Um, now, uh, I've often talked about the token economy on this channel and, and the tokenization of different assets and all types of things on the blockchain. And uh, the, the cool part of that, it could be built on a on the blockchain that you're a fan of, that you hold a token of, right? Because each blockchain has, uh, for the most part, a native token. And the more adoption that blockchain gets, the more value and more valuable the token, its native token becomes. So Israel's government and Tel Aviv Stock Exchange preparing to issue digital state bond. The Israeli government and TASE, or T-A-S-E, are partnering with Fireblocks and VMware to perform live testing of a new blockchain-based platform. Guys, the world that's coming with the metaverse and tokenization is going to be wild. Um, the Israeli government and TASS are partnering with digital asset infrastructure firms, Fireblocks and VMware to perform live testing of a new platform using smart contracts and tokenization for trading and clearing of digital bonds. The live test will see units of the digital bond issued to wallets of the acquiring participants paid for in digital currency, which will be transferred to the Israeli government's e-wallets. Guys, 24-7 trading of assets, atomic settlements, borderless trading. There's no close opening and closing bell. Uh, and in my interview with, recently with Jack McDonald of PolySign and Standard Custody, we talked about this. Uh, the, the world that's coming is going to be crazy. But, you know, the reason why we're studying this, the reason why you're subscribed to this podcast and news channel is to learn about these developments and how you can take a position as an investor because you can benefit from this financially, guys. And whether it be holding the native tokens of certain blockchains or you know doing private equity investments in some companies that are building, like for example, Fireblocks as an example, um, and also, if you want to work in the industry, right, this is a booming, emerging, well, I should say an emerging um, industry, and there's a lot of great jobs, and you can probably get your asking salary. And uh, also, you know, you could be an entrepreneur and look, you might find something uh, or hear something on this podcast and say, you know what, I'm going to start this business and you can go raise capital, right? So a lot of things to think about, guys. This is like the early 90s of the internet. It, it's the technology is here to stay. We know it has to mature and get better, uh, but it's tons of opportunity, tons and tons of opportunity. Um, here we got some weird no news. JP Morgan has reportedly appointed former Celsius exec Aaron Levine as its head of crypto regulatory policy, a new created role. You know, I tweeted out this morning, the jokes sometimes write themselves. <laughs> Why the hell would you want to bring in, uh, you know, Celsius people, especially what the hell is going on right now? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they, you know, they, they, uh, they shouldn't work and they shouldn't get jobs, but it's like, I would not be hiring any Celsius people right now for anything crypto. Maybe, you know, to do something else, right? But man, talk about just bad optics. But the other part of this, the other part is 
as much as Jamie Dimon is fudding Bitcoin and crypto, watch what they're doing. Watch what they're doing. Jamie Dimon is a master of smoke and mirrors. He tells you it's a scam. These tokens aren't worth anything. While they offer Bitcoin to their wealthy clients and they're, they're offering banking services to crypto exchanges and their analysts are studying crypto and they're hiring people for crypto regulation and policy and compliance. <laughs> See what's going on, my friends. I remember in 2017, JP Morgan talking crap about Bitcoin, right? They were secretly building JPM coin and Quorum, right? Uh, trying to compete. The, the, and Quorum was, uh, is an Ethereum-based privacy blockchain. And they're working with consensus. Smoke and mirrors. Don't fall for it. Man, I hope I'm getting through to some of you uh, because when my eyes opened up to not listening to mainstream finance news and what Jamie Dimon had to say years ago before crypto, I did listen to Jamie Dimon. Now I know he's putting out a narrative. That narrative is not to my benefit. It's for his benefit and for them to make money. That's why I have to do my own research. I have to read between the lines here and look at, okay, Jamie's saying all that nonsense, but what does the SEC filings for his companies say? What are uh, you know the reporting of, of uh, what the company is doing as far as hiring and investing and so forth, right? That's, you want to get the factual stuff, not his opinion, not his statements. Because once again, smoke and mirrors. Finally here, uh, Binance US has added support for VeChain staking. So that's that's great. Um, I, I have a Binance US account. I have, excuse me, I have uh, accounts with multiple exchanges for liquidity. And quick tip, I know I've shared these tips before. If one exchange goes down, if you only have an account with one exchange and that goes down, that ties your hands. You, what if you want to sell? What if you want to buy? You're not able to. And what if you're looking to sell during a bull market or a certain period and you know something goes wrong in, in a system or whatever it is, you need to have other options. So I have multiple exchange accounts. I'm fully verified in KYC so that there's no hurdles or roadblocks. And if I need to use them for liquidity, I you know I pull the levers as needed, guys. So um, that's an OG, OG advice there. <laughs> If you don't have accounts at multiple exchanges, trusted exchanges, uh, I recommend you, you you definitely do that. You know, if you're looking to dabble in crypto and um, you know you're looking to eventually, you know, as you hodl, that could become hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly millions of dollars. So you want to make sure you have those liquidity on and off ramps with these exchanges. All right, guys. That's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button and I'll share, excuse me, and I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.